office recommendation is to approve. Um, is it an FDA application? So do you have a move up? Thank you. Second up. Can we go to the vote, please? All those in favour? That's unanimous. Can I, can I just ask if we've got uh, anybody here for item six? On that basis, is it okay with the committee if we move to item seven? Sorry. Sorry, number eight. Is that okay? Is that agreed? to do item 8 and then item 11. <coughs> Matthew, can we have a presentation for item 8, please? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this was another application that was subject to a member's site visit following its deferral from Planning Committee on the 7th of May. Uh, the proposal seeks permission for the demolition of an existing single-storey garage and the erection of a detached double garage with a pitched roof. The garage is to be used for domestic purposes in association with the use of 20 Tenby Drive as a residential property. The scale of the proposal is larger than the existing flat roof single storey garage, but is cited so as to minimise any impact on the amenities of adjoining property. Objections have been raised relating to unauthorised business uses taking place at the property and these are being investigated separate, separately and do not have any bearing on this application for a domestic garage. Whilst doubling in size the existing single garage, the proposal is considered to be at a scale that is appropriate to its plot and its surroundings. In addition to the two conditions detailed at page 34 of this report, it is, it is considered an additional condition to limit the use of the garage for the housing of motor vehicles and for domestic purposes is appropriate. Such a condition would read, notwithstanding the provisions of the Town and Country Planning General Permitted Development Order 1995, or any order revisiting, revoking, and reenacting that order with or without modification, no internal or external alteration shall take place to the garage hereby approved which would preclude its use for housing motor vehicles without the prior written approval of the local planning authority. Any use of the garage for commercial purposes would require a separate permission and a further application. The proposals are considered to be acceptable and are recommended for approval. There's no petition or rejection. Do we have a word councillor that would like to speak on this? <coughs> Thank you, Chair, um, and thank you for all members for attending the table this morning today. Um, I'm Councillor Katrina Johnson, and as a ward councillor, I have a duty to represent any residents who request me to do so. I have been asked by the applicant, Mr. Duncan, at 20 Tenby Drive, to speak to you in relation to his application to his planning of his double garage, which he has been advised will be used as a domestic garage which is how it has been presented to the Planning Committee and it should be assessed by the Planning Committee in this way as concerns about the potential for unauthorised use do not warrant a refusal. All of the all of the concerns raised relate to the possible use of the building causing noise, noise and pollution to local residents. As the Council has other powers which can be applied in the event that any statutory nuisance is caused, these grounds for refusing the application cannot be considered to justify a refusal of Planning Commission. Mr. Duncan is aware that any diversion from this could result in enforcement as it will be against his planning application. Mr. Duncan notes objections from residents are, and as such would like to clarify this message with the committee, they are as follows. 
running a car repair business. The use of the garage resulting in pollution, fumes and noise, health issues, sound and smell more like an industrial estate, out of character and overbearing effect. Mr Duncan has asked me to explain that he has a hobby whereby he tinkers around with old used cars, he is not running a business from home, as is suggested. He works for the NHS and so he would not have the time to run a business from home. He also needs the extra storage room since his family downsized from a four bedroom house. In terms of being out of character, Mr Duncan advises that there, is, that there is a garage of very similar to that design with a pitched roof almost opposite his bungalow at 20 Tenby Drive Morton. The overbearing effect comment, I am advised that the extended width of the proposed garage will be into his own garden. There is currently a 1.8 metre high wooden fence which forms the boundary to the north and east of this property and the proposed garage height up to the east would measure slightly more at more than 2 metres with a pitched roof. Planning officers have stipulated that this is not uncharacteristic of a residential area and due to the separation distances achieved it is deemed that the development would not have an adverse impact to the amenities of neighbouring properties in terms of loss of sight. In terms of causing annoyance and nuisance to neighbours, Mr Duncan realises this is not a planning issue and is aware that enforcement action can be taken against him if he is not behaving as a good neighbour. He is aware that the application for his property is located within land designated as primary residential area in the rural Wintry Development Plan. He believes that his application complies with national policy and PCS requiring good design, policy HS, one house extensions and SPG one house extensions are directly relevant in this instance. Thank you for listening to me. Sorry, do you have an abstention? One. 
station. Thank you. We can we go back to the substantive motion now then? So, Denise, you're going to move the do you have a second bill? All those in favour? Those against? Abstentions? That's carried. previous application for two holiday let accommodation units was refused and subsequently dismissed on appeal due to the lack of any off-street parking provision. This amended proposal reduces the number of units from two to one and provides for an integral parking space ensuring vehicles would not be parked in the access road or on the, on the adjacent highway. The building is capable of being converted without requiring significant modification or rebuild and a structural survey has been submitted and appraised to confirm this. The reuse of the building as holiday elect would assist in conserving the building, which is considered to make a positive contribution to the character of the Frankby Conservation Area. The proposal also, confer uh, the proposal also uh, confer conforms with the principles of the National Planning Policy Framework and uh, supports sustainable economic growth in rural areas. It is considered the proposals do not harm the openness of the Greenbelt or the character of the conservation area and will secure the long-term future of the barn, which contributes positively to the area. Changes to the external appearance of the building have been kept to a minimum, thereby preserving the character and appearance of this rural building and its setting. The application is therefore recommended for approval. Councillor Clements requested the application be reported to committee for the reasons summarised on page 60. Um, however, there's also a qualifying petition of objection that's been received. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, would the representative of the petition like to address the committee in support of that petition?
is still being used and is part of a very successful and thriving working delivery farm. There is no need to take the farm out of agricultural use to ensure its survival. <coughs> Secondly, the reasons for the refusal of the first application to the Italian sector arose from two main reasons. Firstly, the risk of part of the climate lake. And secondly, vehicles resorting to reversing out onto the country road by virtue of the width of the climate lake not affording a vehicle to be able to turn around. Both of these factors were found to lead to the detriment of highway safety. The applicant has sought to address these concerns by providing the parking space within the barn itself. However, it is not accepted that there is sufficient room to manoeuvre out of the garage to drive out of the private lane in fourth gear, not least because of the width of the lane itself, but because of the position of the building partway down the private lane itself. The committee will be kind of to look at this very three. It will be obvious there that the building on the left of the lane is exactly at the point where a vehicle would need to attempt to reverse out of the first garage. With one parking space, it would be very tight to maneuver into. It is highly likely that the vehicles would attempt to park in the private lane itself. This is also a public footpath. Walkers will come into direct conflict with any vehicle emerging or maneuvering back and forth across this narrow lane. Vehicles and pedestrians would have to emerge blind from the holiday net into the private lane and into the path of vehicles and pedestrians. The holiday net is the top of the how can it be that the main door to a property opening directly onto a road without any step, apron, or curtilage be regarded as acceptable or road safe? How can it be that a car emerging blind from within the bar itself onto the same road across popular public footpaths with traffic parking from both directions be regarded similarly as acceptable or road safe? Finally, may I address you on the manner of the conversion of the site? It is to be noted that the planning inspector observed that on the other side of the barn, namely the farming outside, there will be no threat to highway safety as there is room for cars and maneuver. And that I hope will be a count of protocol 4A and 4B, which you have in front of you. Vehicles and pedestrians would not come into direct conflict with each other and they would not be emerging blind. This barn forms part of the manor farm unit. And all of its access and exit points are already onto the farm line. The applicant's time to these show that he has full and undisputed rights of access and egress via the farm line onto the country road itself. There is no justification for altering all the entry and exit points from one side of the building to the other. The applicant may say that the farm yard gates are locked at night, which should be provided may just simply be the keeper gates provided by his brother be included in the holiday that keys. Contrary to the case officer's report, this application would result in significant alterations to the bar on the private lane side, namely four new lots of windows, a new pedestrian doorway, and most significantly, a new vehicle entry. You have 20 seconds now. Well, I just follow up on the, uh, the proposal is to close up the video before it exists on the farming on the side. That's to be seen in 4A and B. And having closed up that opening, on the other side, it's then proposed to form a new large opening for a vehicle into a more built and vast ancient Hamilton lot. Not only would this unnecessarily break through the austere and majestic expanse of Hamilton lot, but it also runs in time conflict to preserve an additional layout of farm just, buildings around the Excuse me, could you just finish up the slide? Uh, absolutely, yes, I've got the tree, two paragraphs on my name. So the proposal will turn the bar back to front and proposes significant changes to the opening in order for this to happen. And this to a building of archaeological, archaeological importance in a very prominent position in a conservation area, and a conservation area that is going to be unique for its agricultural heritage. I invite you to refuse the application on grounds of safety, um, minimizing physical alterations <coughs> for those that are truly necessary. Thank you. I'll have to stop you there. I think um, we've had some of those comments. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Is the applicant or agent like to make representation in support of their application? Yeah, my name's 